Okay, so let's be honest, the Insta360 GO 3 up against other market-leading traditional action cameras isn't necessarily the fairest comparison in most scenarios. I want to put this in the clip mount, and normally you'd have this... Well, you see a lot of people using it with their baseball caps. I don't wear baseball caps because I look like Forrest Gump, but I'm going to put it on my beanie, not the best day because it's quite warm, but I'm going to see if I can put it on my beanie and um because i kind of like that pov shot where it's on my head so if it clips on well then that'll be great when it comes to the insta360 go 3 for pov it should definitely be a serious consideration and i'm not saying that because this video is sponsored by insta360 i'm definitely going to be highlighting the go 3 shortcomings because in comparison to action cameras such as the new dji osmo action 4 or the older gopro hero 11 it has its downsides which i'll get onto in a minute so stay tuned because even with its shortcomings it has some key advantages that the other action cameras can't compete with all right, to go yeah, yeah, sure, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to disturb you. That's okay. Taking a shot. That's <laughs> all right, thank you. Let's just cross a few obvious things off first. The likes of the DJI Osmo Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 11 are going to give you far better battery life in comparison to the Go 3 when it's out of its action pod. But when it's in its action pod, you're going to get the better battery life with the Go 3. Plus, you can swap batteries, which you can't do with the Go 3, and the Go 3 has no way of using SD cards. You have to buy the camera based on how much storage you think you'll need. And when it comes to video quality, I'd 100% be lying if I told you that the Go 3 is going to give you video quality that rivals that over the other cameras because it's simply simply doesn't. You'll get far superior image quality from the Hero 11, which shoots up to 5.3K 60, which looks absolutely stunning. Plus, it can shoot up to 4K 120 like the DJI Osmo Action 4, which also produces excellent video quality. The most that the Insta360 GO 3 can do is 2.7K up to 60fps in normal video mode. And in the free frame video mode, which lets you reframe the footage later on, it shoots up to 1440p. So it's not a super high resolution by any means, especially when you consider the fact that you can shoot in an aspect ratio of 8x7 with the GoPro Hero 11 and choose whichever part of the frame you want to use later as well and you're getting far higher resolution with much better image quality. But for a lot of people, image quality simply isn't always the be all and end all. Sometimes other factors far outweigh getting the best image quality possible from a camera. So here are three ways that Insta360 GO 3 shines when it comes to shooting POV. The first being its size. When you put this up against the Hero 11 or the Action 4, they look similar, like normal action cameras, until you take the GO 3 out of its action pod, and this is where you get a tiny, inconspicuous camera that is lightweight, unobtrusive and discreet. If you want to have an idea of what this is like to vlog with, even if it's not going to be your main vlogging camera, but if you were just out and about and you were just getting POV shots and you just wanted to do a piece to camera like this and just talk about whatever, then just gives you an idea of what the footage is like, what the audio sounds like, and yeah, just thought I'd let you hear it. The sun's actually behind me at the moment, so obviously with any action camera it's always going to be best if you're kind of front lit rather than back lit because otherwise the footage is just going to look really um just look mushy and just too dark especially with this because it's not got the biggest sensor the image quality really needs as much help as it can get so having as much light on you is going to be best so if you do want to walk and talk but the sun is behind oh i just stepped in a puddle good job i got the bike shoes on today but yeah if you find that you want to walk and talk then it's just going to be best for you to just kind of stop and then turn around and just do it with the sun on you so that you're getting that best quality footage that you can get. I get self-conscious walking around filming in public and even the GoPro Hero 11 or the Action 4, which is very much smaller than a traditional mirrorless camera, I still feel like it draws attention to myself, but with the Go 3 mounted on my chest, it's less so. I can completely forget that it's there. Plus, because it's lightweight, I can comfortably just mount it to my top without it feeling like it's going to drag my top down. But one of the ways I'd use my Hero 11 for POV before having the Insta360 Go 3 was using it in my mouth on a bike mount or with a head strap. The bike mount was my favourite because it meant that I could quickly take it out of my mouth and then hold on to it to get a different kind of shot and then just put it back in my mouth really quickly without having to take it off the head strap and then put it back on and fiddle around with the screws. But those two perspectives always felt more immersive. But having something a lot smaller that doesn't need a dedicated bite mount is so much more convenient. Plus if you wear a baseball cap, you can use the clip mount to easily put it on there and it truly feels weightless. And whilst I'm on the subject of mounts, I know this isn't necessarily to do with POV, but just having a little camera that you can mount anywhere magnetically just makes it really handy to get really creative shots that you wouldn't 
wouldn't necessarily be able to get with any other camera. The other thing is, if you want to put the camera down and you just want to talk to it, but there's not like a table or a bench or anything like that, then if you find a lamp post or anything that's going to magnetically stick to, then you can just put it there and you don't have to worry about having a tripod or something like that. It just works really well. With the Insta360 GO3, I mentioned the Action Pod earlier. Not only does it charge the GO3, but you can also use it for remote viewing. You can do this with the likes of the Action 4 via your mobile phone as well and the DJI Mimo app, and it works great. And you can also do this with the Hero 11. You can use your phone to set up your shot, but as soon as you hit record, you lose your preview. That doesn't happen with the GO3. So if you have this mounted anywhere, you'll always have full view of what your camera's seeing. But you do have to be within a certain range of the action pod because if you go a certain distance away, then it's gonna lose connection. And even though it loses connection, it does still keep recording. So at least you're not gonna lose your footage, but you're just gonna lose that preview so you won't be able to see what you're doing. It's so nice how people will just stop and ask you if they can go by when you're filming, just in case they're in your shot. I really don't mind, but it's nice that people ask anyway. But yeah, so you do want to kind of just be mindful of that, that you will lose connection and you won't be able to see what you're recording, but it will keep recording.